Hello, my name is Karen Hughes. In this module, we're going to talk about optimization recommendations as part of TrueSight Cloud Cost Control. The agenda for this module is very straightforward. I'm going to have one slide on discussing optimization recommendations, and then I'm going to go right into a live demo of Cloud Cost Control, specifically focusing on optimization. So when we talk about optimization recommendations as part of the public cloud, the number one thing is to understand that when customers migrate to the public cloud, often they lose track of how many VMs are actually running in the cloud and how many are actually being leveraged. This solution not only helps you keep track of what is actually running in the public cloud, but we also track it from a cost perspective. So now when you look at some of these, uh, the infrastructure or the platforms that are in the public cloud, you can identify exactly how much money you can save by either removing or um, terminating existing VMs or even reconfiguring VMs that are currently in the public cloud to help you save money. This includes both from a compute perspective as well as from a storage perspective. So in this module, we're going to focus on the cost optimization tab in TrueSight Cloud Cost Control. All right, so let's log on to the solution. And once we log on, we immediately come to our summary page in Cloud Cost Control. We're going to slide on over to the Cost Optimization tab and click it. And this is where it gives us a view into how much money we can potentially save by either reallocating the VMs we currently have or removing some um, or terminating the VMs that we currently have that are running idle. But if you notice at the top, this is also a combination of AWS on-prem and Azure. So we can toggle off the on-prem and we are only looking at the data for our public cloud. Just as if you want to focus on one public cloud at a time, you can certainly toggle the other ones off as well. This view gives me information as far as how much money I currently am, it's currently costing me, and then the estimated savings per month if I were to optimize my environment. So the first thing I can do is I can take a look at the VMs that I'm recommended to terminate. I can save roughly $52,000 a month in this particular situation, which is quite substantial. So if we click on the link that says 62 idle VMs to terminate, it then gives me a list of all those 62 VMs that I might want to look at in order to figure out whether or not I should terminate them or not. It also tells me whether or not it's running in Azure or AWS. So I know exactly which public cloud I need to focus on or tell my cloud team that they should focus on. And then it gives me information about how utilized those VMs are, as well as how much money I could save. So if you specifically want to look at things like um, utilization that's, that's smallest to largest, or look for a certain provider, et cetera, or look for certain servers, you certainly have the ability to filter on that. But more importantly, I can do something as simple as click on the, the blue flag, and it's going to give me much more details about that particular server, including that um, why I should terminate it and how much money I could save, both from the VM perspective or the EC2 instance, as well as from a storage perspective. So this is not just looking at VMs, it's actually looking at the associated storage and how much that also would cost you because it's running in, in, um, in this particular case, AWS, and it's consuming money that you're basically not leveraging. At the same time, if I were to go back to the over-allocated VMs, in this particular case, we have 301 over-allocated VMs that we can save roughly $28,000 if we were to reconfigure them. So again, I have the same kind of filter criteria, and I can change, um, you know, whether, you know, the filters for any of the different columns, and I can understand utilizations and those types of things. There also are flags to help with recommendations. So if I click on one here, you could also see, here's how I recommend you change the size of the EC2 instance from, in this particular case, M3 large to M5 large, and I can save roughly $48 per month for that particular server. It also tells you whether or not we recommend to change the specs, either from a CPU, memory, or storage perspective. So in a very quick couple clicks, I can get details on not just 
how much money I could save, but also how I should reconfigure an environment to save, save money and, to, and control my costs. So this is how this particular dashboard shows me how I can save money from terminating idle VMs or reconfiguring over allocated VMs. But if you're leveraging AWS, perhaps you want to look at your reserved instances. This AWS reserved instance tab gives me insight into how much my reserved instances are actually costing me and whether or not I should either secure or purchase additional ones to save money or whether or not I need to make sure the reserved instances I have are used to the fullest ability. So the reason why, as most of you know, we would recommend a reserved instance is because reserved instances are not necessarily as costly as on-demand or spot instances. So we want to make sure that we tell you how you can potentially save money and how much money you can save if you were to purchase additional reserved instances. And that's what this dashboard is showing you here. So if I click on this five new AWS reserved instances to purchase link, it's going to give me which, uh, or recommend to me which of the infrastructure I have, should I make a reserved instance, how much it's gonna cost, what kind of instance type it is, and again, where it is located and, and how much, how many instances are in there. So it gives you great insight into what's going on. You also can click <clears throat> for more details on the flag, which gives you more details as far as how much you could save and the term and payment options. So this gives you much more insight into controlling your cost as well. If I go back to the three reserved existing reserved instances, how I can see some more savings, you can see there's max savings would be in this gray area. I can click on that and it'll again tell me which reserved instances that it does represent or does recommend for helping me realize more savings. If I click on the reserved instance, it'll actually give me some details as far as, um, you know, how much more can I save and how I can maximize the efficiency of this reserved instance. And it could also give me details on the resources that are in there and then of the usage from a performance perspective. So there's great insight or great details and great information that's really available at your fingertips in cloud cost control from a cost optimization perspective. But there's one other item I want to show you. In a previous module, I explained how you can actually do a um, migration from on-prem to the public cloud, but you also can do a migration from one public cloud to another public cloud or one public cloud cloud to the same public cloud. And the reason I say this is because it is possible that you are not maximizing your savings. So if I choose on choose a business service that currently is in AWS and then I simulate moving that to the public cloud again, it is possible that when I look at AWS today and then I look at the recommendations the cost is slightly different. And this also would represent how you potentially can optimize your AWS environment because now what you're seeing is in this particular case before this particular server that's part of that business service was in Frankfurt and it was a size R32XL, but we recommend it being an R4 large. This will also save money and with look at the cost difference just on that one particular server alone, it goes from roughly $850 to $162. So that certainly is much more uh, beneficial. But this gives you also another way of optimizing your environment and seeing the recommendations that we prefer or that we recommend. Plus, you could also play with the um, environment as well by clicking on the pencil and then modifying or changing the instance type that we recommend and see how that potentially is, would change the performance as well as the cost. Okay, so that concludes this module on opt cost optimization and TrueSight Cloud Cost Control. I appreciate your time and look forward to discussing additional functionality with other modules in the future. Thanks and have a great day.